Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Introducing Timberland Data on Acres. Uh, my name is Ben Maddox. I'm joined by Amanda Lang. We're going to go through uh, brief introductions here in a moment and cover the details of uh, this exciting collaboration. So we'll do a couple things today. We'll uh, both introduce ourselves. We'll go through an overview of the collaboration. We'll actually do a live uh, demo of some of the features that we're going to cover today. And then we're also going to have a question and answer session at, at the end of today's webinar. I would encourage you to go ahead and submit questions during the webinar. It's in the kind of the chat box at the bottom right. And we'll get to those when we finish, answer them all at once. Uh, so please send us your questions. This will be recorded. Uh, so if you want to review it later, share it with a colleague, it will be available to uh, watch again. So we are recording this and appreciate you all joining us today. Without further ado, uh, we'll go ahead and get into introductions. Amanda? Yeah, thanks, Ben, and thanks for having me today. I'm Amanda Lang, and I'm COO and VP of Client Services at Forest Consulting. And in my role, I oversee all the operating activities of Forest Consulting, including managing our consulting business and projects and subscriber support activities. So again, thanks so much for having me today, Ben. Fantastic. I'm Ben Maddox, Vice President of Business Development here at Acres. Uh, my background, I'm an accredited farm manager as well as a licensed broker in the state of Arkansas. Uh, I've worked on a couple hundred million dollars of farm and timberland transactions, and I'm excited now to be working on leading the uh, sales efforts and development efforts for our Acres data product, which you're going to see a little bit of today. So here's a brief overview of our agenda. Uh, so we're going to cover all the things I mentioned earlier. So, um, you know, without further ado, we'll kind of go over the two individual organizations, Acres and Forest. Uh, so what is Acres? Uh, Acres is a land research platform that's comprised of a national landowner database, uh, a rural property transaction database, and diligence tools for farm and timberland underwriting, like those we're going to see today. Uh, Acres is built for the land professional, from brokers to appraisers to land managers uh, and foresters who want an easier way to manage transactions, their portfolio, and grow their business. Amanda's going to introduce uh, Forisk. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Forest is a forest economics research firm, and we specialize in analyzing timber markets and wood baskets. We deliver forecasts and analysis of forest industry markets and timberland investments, and companies, they participate in our research program by subscribing to different reports and data sets that we offer. Uh, one of those is the Forest Research Quarterly, which includes timber price forecasts and industry analysis. We also have the Forest Wood Fiber Review, which tracks pulpwood and ship prices and markets in North America. We also have the Forest Market Bulletin, and this provides market intelligence on mill investments and timberland deals. And then lastly, we provide the North American Forest Industry Capacity Database, or the Mill Database for short. And this includes lists and data on wood using mills. And this is the data set that's included in the partnership with Acres, and we're gonna be talking more about it later today. Fantastic. So uh, before we get into what is the mill database, uh, we're going to go through kind of a high level of what's included uh, in this collaboration and this partnership. Before I do that, I'll start with some brief background and an anecdote. So our firm and individual team members here at Acres have been utilizing the Forest uh, data products for a number of years, and we've trusted their data products for our own internal use over those years. As we were using them and in coordination with the team at Forest, uh, we undertook a project to visualize that information in our own database on our platform, Acres for Internal Use. And about a year ago, uh, we began doing that and spoke with the Forest team about what it might look like to share some of those insights with their existing customers of those data products. And so the idea was that we really wanted to add value to the customer experience for Forest data subscribers. And uh, by way of sharing sort of the build out that we did with the Timber Data Mill, um, we're actually able to add value to the subscription of individual data, uh, forest data members. So today we're going to cover uh, a couple things. First, what is included in that mill database? And we're also going to cover what is included in our timber site index. So the timber site index we'll cover in just a moment, but it's also being rolled out simultaneously with access to the mill database. So Amanda, would you like to cover what is the forest mill database? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Ben. And I also just wanted to share from our perspective with, with relation to the partnership, we're really excited about it at Forisk. And we really wanted to give our clients access to a tool to help them visualize mill data and use it to make decisions. And the partnership with Acres helps us give our clients a tool to quickly see the mill data 
and combine it with timber ownership and data layers within the Acres platform. So really excited to be able to offer this and, and talk with everybody about it today. So about the mill database. So we created this version of the mill database about five years ago per request from our clients. They wanted access to current updated data on mill size and wood use. And they also wanted spatial data and the ability to make maps of mills. So that's why we offered it. So what it includes, the mill database includes information on wood using mills in the U.S. and Canada for the major mill types. So this includes sawmills, OSB mills, engineered wood products and mass timber facilities, plywood plants, pulp mills, wood pellet plants, and chip mills. So it's pretty comprehensive in terms of the types of mills that we, we include in the data set. The specific data includes things like an ID number to keep each mill separate and also the mill name and company and location information. It also includes wood use volumes and capacity estimates for each mill with ownership estimates and capacity and ownership information for the past 12 years. So we actually have the ability with the data set to study trends and changes over time by industry and local market. And the data from us is delivered in Excel and in a shapefile format and now also for our subscribers, there's this option to, to see the data in the Acres platform. In terms of the recency of the data, we do update this data set quarterly, and our team is tracking mill changes weekly in our internal data set, and we publish a fresh mill update every quarter. I also wanted to give a shout out to Pat Jolly on our team. Pat is the mill database product manager here at Floresk, and he's responsible for publishing this data quarterly. He also is leading our team in any updates that we're doing to the data, including an annual review of every mill in the data set in which we review each mill's data for accuracy. So um, for those of you that subscribe or are looking to subscribe, you'll get to know Pat pretty well. Um, really appreciate the work that he does for us. In terms of who is using the database today, we've got several different companies using it, including manufacturing firms, Timberland investors, even universities and business analysts. And they're using the data set for, for different reasons. Uh, some folks just want to make maps. Other people want to do analysis and, and some want to do deep dive analysis on specific timber basins and markets. So there's a lot of ways to, to use the data set. And then lastly, there's several subscription options available to purchase the data. We have an option to, to purchase the entire data set, which covers North America. So that covers the United States and Canada. And then we also have options to purchase regional subsets of the data. So there's different things available depending on what your needs are. So that's the database in a nutshell. Well, great. And, you know, when you access the Forest data products inside of Acres, uh, they are the same data products, but what is different about them? It's that ability to map that Amanda alluded to. So we've allowed you to access that information alongside a lot of other helpful pieces of data, including uh, satellite imagery, parcel owner maps, uh, and ultimately timber site index, which you're going to see a quick demonstration of today. So really what we're trying to do is, uh, again, add value to that experience. It's the same database, but just visualized with inside acres. Before we jump into the demo, I also wanted to cover briefly the timber site index and sort of what it is for, I'm sure most of our viewers today are familiar with it, uh, but it is a basically a layer for all of the, of the United States that covers estimated site productivity for different species of trees, whether it be deciduous, evergreen, and you can go through and sub look at subspecies from there. So we'll do that in just a moment, but it's an approximation of productivity for each tree species on that site as measured by uh, potential tree height. So you'll see how that works in just a moment. So I'm going to change my screen here, and I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Uh, so let's see. How's that look, Amanda? You see, that you have looks a, good. OK, great. So uh, we'll start out. We'll just try and find a property. I, uh, I did work on one ahead of time. So we'll just do a quick search so we have something to actually uh, take a look at. And let's go to. Fayette County, Alabama, and we'll just pick something uh, like this. We'll zoom into it, and we'll go over here, and we'll find a timber property, and let's select this one. So we have this property. Uh, we've done our search. We've got the property selected, and we'll go over here to our insights, which is kind of like the GIS toolbox, and that's where you'll find the forest timber mill database as well as the site index. So we'll begin with the timber mills. So I'll open that up, and you'll see here uh, all the information on the tooltip about this data source from Forest Consulting, and you'll find a bunch of information about 
Uh, do you want to sort by certain types of mills, uh, status of mills, or do you want to sort by uh, sort of distance from your subject property? So in this case, we have 100 acres selected in Fayette County, Alabama. And let's just pretend we want to know about mills within a 65 mile radius of that property. So we'll enter that. And you'll quickly get a population of those mills in the vicinity of the property within 65 mile radius. And so once I look at these, I can come in here and say, well, I'll click on this one right here. I'll zoom into it and I'll see both what type of mill it is, the historical uh, capacity of that mill, as well as the historical owner of that mill. And again, all this is coming from the Forest Timber Mill database. We've simply visualized it here in the application. So uh, if we go back to our subject property and we take a look at it, we can zoom out again and get a sense of um, where all of those mills are in the entire United States. So we don't have to necessarily just sort by within 65 miles, we can visualize the US. So if you have a sub-regional subscription to Forest, maybe it's uh, not the entire national database, but just one region, you will be limited to just that region within acres. If you have the national access, of course, you will get all the mills in the United States. So uh, just a quick bird's eye view of everything inside of here, uh, but we'll return to our subject property now and briefly look at timber site index. Before I do that, Amanda, was there anything you wanted to comment on as you sat there and look at uh, everything visualized on the screen? Anything to note for the folks on the webinar today? Yeah, thanks, Ben. It's really neat to see this in action on, on the demo side. Um, I really liked seeing when you selected that particular mill, there was a graph at the bottom where you could see the capacity changes. So that particular mill has had some investments. Um, and so it's neat to see the capacity change over time in terms of that mill expanding and, and having some investments. The other thing that's neat to see about this is you can see um, just the number of mills around a subject property and also the different colors are indicating different types of mills. And so you have the ability with just a few clicks within this platform to see a lot of different information as it relates to those properties, including the types of mills. And then for each individual mill, you can see some of those changes really in real time with the graphs. So um, really, really cool to see that, Ben. Thanks. Fantastic. So we'll go back to the subject property and just go through site index briefly. So I'll turn that on, selecting this down here. And this is where you can kind of choose uh, what type of tree species you're interested in analyzing the property for. In this case, let's do loblolly pine. And we'll see that the aggregate site index across the different soil types and slopes on this property is 66.24. So again, there's a tool tip here to kind of help interpret these results. But at the end of the day, you can toggle between different tree species and get different results based on what the potential productivity of the site is for that particular tree. And so in this case, uh, we could do a couple other things if we wanted to. We can look at the FEMA flood and wetlands layer. We can look at elevation for this potential property. Uh, but at the end of the day, you can ultimately export these things out to a uh, quick PDF report. Please note that the uh, mill database is not available in the PDF reports, but the timber site index is. So just as a quick overview, um, if you were to export this property to PDF, the timber site index would be at the end of the report after the satellite imagery, and you'll just see it right here, and you can get a nice uh, report of your subject property and what the aggregate site index is for your target species on that particular uh, parcel. So this is not limited to single parcels of analysis. You could do this on uh, 20 parcels. You can do it on a custom selection. We do allow you to import and export files in KML type, so if you need to move in and out of Google Earth, uh, we do allow you to do that. Uh, so you're not limited to just parcel level selections. So I think that concludes most of the uh, information we were going to cover in the brief demo. I think now we have about, uh, about 10 minutes for a Q&A. And again, I'll uh, encourage you to use the chat function in the bottom right hand screen of your screen to submit questions to Amanda and I. We'll be happy to answer them. Uh, let's see, I've got a, I'll take the first one here, Amanda, and then we'll kind of divide and conquer. Let's see, for example, there's a question about land zoning. Um, so this is kind of particular to the Acres product, but uh, so we're not actually going to have much on residential or commercial land zoning inside of our application. We are focused on rural properties. So um, 
farmland, timberland, ranch land, uh, all that will be covered in cyber application. But if you're looking for commercial zoning for, uh, you know, urban areas, uh, we don't currently support that in cyber application. There's a question about the source of land ownership data. So ultimately that comes from uh, county tax assessors. So we'll pull that information from the county tax assessors, usually on a monthly cadence. And uh, Amanda, you guys, uh, I don't know how much you guys go into this, but um, maybe the source of information about uh, mill ownership might be kind of interesting. Yeah, sure, Ben. So for the, the mill data, including the ownership information, as well as the capacity information, we're really checking a bunch of public data sets, including company websites, annual reports, conference proceedings, news articles, really just scouring the web for any kind of information we can get. And we also like to vet it with people that we know that are operating in the market. So we're talking with our clients and also our market contacts just to verify the information on the ground. And we go through our process every year to, to validate the information of all of the mills that we're, we're producing in our database. So each one is touched at least every year by one of our team members. Yeah, we found that uh, a very similar thing is important in, in our product, which is that it's great to have sort of uh, maybe big data sources, but there's still a manual uh, review involved in all this information. It's really critical to have a, an expert's eye to go over all that information so that you're not just giving to your users something that hasn't been reviewed by a professional, right? So I know that's important to you all and certainly something we've tried to implement in our product as well. There's a question here about the distance to mill functionality, uh, and it's a good one. It says, is it uh, a straight line or is it as the roads might travel? And it's definitely a straight line. Um, we don't currently support sort of a routing feature inside of our application using roadways, something to look at in the future, but it is a straight line distance from the subject problem. Let's see, there's a question about getting leads for a marketing campaign. Maybe this is potentially for landowners near a mill or a particular, sub particular subject property. Um, you're certainly welcome to uh, create a marketing list. We provide landowner mailing addresses, but we don't provide additional data like phone numbers or emails for individuals, just their mailing address. So um, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, if you're using the product, you can review the mailing address for anyone who owns a parcel in the United States. Amanda, I know that as we wait for more questions to come in, I know your team has just in the last week or two really started getting access to it. Have they uh, shared any comments about the functionality or things that they liked about uh, the way it was set up? So, Ben, I haven't had a chance to really dig in with the team, but there were some high level comments that they really thought it was just very neat to see all the information that you've got in the platform. Uh, another thing that uh, someone shared with me was that it was very fast. They were impressed by how fast it was to load all the data that you have in the platform and be able to use it very quickly. So they were really impressed with the speed at which they were able to navigate within the platform as well. Great. Uh, we just had another question come in that might be best suited for you, Amanda. I think it's beyond my technical understanding. Yeah. So the, the question's about, um, it says the mill capacity data is very valuable. Um, they were also asking if FIA inventory data may be available on the platform to make rough assumptions on growth versus drain. So with respect to the Forest uh, products, it's currently not included in the mill database itself. So that data set is really specific to forest industry manufacturing facilities. Um, however, we at Forest are using the FIA inventory data very frequently, and it is a part of our timber supply research and analysis that we offer as part of the Forest Research Quarterly, which is our report that is tracking industry trends and timber pricing. We do have several data sets available to our clients and different mapping products and different maps. So we do have some of that data available in summary form for subscribers of the Forest Research Quarterly. And that's kind of a, a good segue to uh, if they want access to that information or really any additional information from you all uh, at Forest, Amanda, what is the best step for them to take? Yeah, thanks, Ben. And so if you're already a subscriber to uh, one of our products, contact Heather and Ben if you'd like to learn more about the Acres Partnership and get access to Acres. Um, if you're not a subscriber to Forest and you want to learn more about us and our products, contact Heather Clark directly. You'll see Heather's email information here on the slide, hsclark at forest.com. So just shoot Heather a note and uh, we'll be happy to connect with you. Okay, great. Well, uh, we had a pretty big registrant list today. We will be sending out the recording to everyone who signed up today. Uh, and so if you have any questions following up, uh, we'll direct those uh, to the team at Forest and get you guys an answer turned around the next day or so. Uh, so we really appreciate everyone joining us today. Amanda, do you have any sort of final words, or parting thoughts? 
I just just say that that we at Forest are really excited to be able to offer this with the Acres team. We've had a great experience working with the Acres team and just really value that relationship and partnership and are just really excited to be able to offer this to our clients. So thanks so much, Ben, and, and to you and your team for working with us on this. Yeah, absolutely. It's been uh, a lot of fun and we're looking forward to the future. And please uh, yeah, follow up with us. We'd love to walk you through it one on one if you have uh, interest and uh, we'll speak, hope to speak with all of you again soon. Bye, Amanda. Bye. Thanks, Ben. Bye-bye.